Hello, Julian here of Julian Creates, and welcome to the solo along for ME 2009 View B, which are the Taylor Joggers. I hope you enjoy the solo along. Let's get started. So to get started with View B, let's review our pattern pieces. First, we have pattern piece 10, which is our leg front. You will need two of these cut out of your fabric. You have number 11, which is your pocket facing. You will need two of these cut out of your fabric. You have piece 12, which is your pocket. You will need two of these cut out of your fabric. Then you have pieces 13 and 14. These are your right fly as well as your fly facing. You will need to cut one of these out of fabric and for number 14, you will also need to cut one out of interfacing. Then you have piece. You have piece 15, which is your uh, back of your pants. You will need two of these cut out of your fabric. Then you will need piece 16, which is your welt. You will need to cut two as well as cut two out of interfacing. Then you will need piece number 17, which is your back pocket. You will need to cut two of these. Then you have 18, 19, and 20. These make up your waistband. So you have your right front waistband, your left front waistband, and your back casing. You need to cut one of each of these as well as one out of interfacing for each. And then for your back casing, you will cut one of these on the fold. Lastly, you need piece 21, which is your guide for your elastic. With that, you will also need to make sure that you have your notions, which include your thread, your um, elastic, as well as the cording or, or twill tape that you will use for your drawstrings, as well as um, a hook and eye or some type of fastening for the front of your pants as well. And also you will need your zipper. Now that you have all your pieces um, of your pattern, make sure you cut those out, do all of your notches and your markings and interface your pieces that need to be interfaced. And let's come back and get started. All right, we're gonna start off with our pants front. And the first step we have to do is make the tuck. So if you're looking at the pattern piece, there is a horizontal line that goes all the way down the pattern, which notifies where the tuck is supposed to be. The way that I kind of indicate that on my actual fabric is I decide to make small little notches right where I want the tuck. So I do one at the top, as well as one at the bottom. This just helps to make sure that when it goes time to fold it, I kind of make sure that I am able to get a pretty straight line of where that tuck is supposed to land. So now once you do that, what I would do is I would take this over to my iron and press it so that I'm making sure that I'm getting a good um, straight edge. Then you are going to sew it at a scant eighth of an inch. The best way to do that is if you have like a blind hem foot helps you um, get a straight edge and you can put this on um, the quarter inch mark on your sewing machine and then scoot your needle over to get it closer to that um, scant eighth of an inch. And we get to when we get to the sewing machine, I will show you that. But we are going to do this to both pants fronts. So now that I'm over at my sewing machine, I'm using my regular foot and I also have scooted my needle over just two notches and I'm going to use my quarter inch mark on my machine and if you have like a walking foot or dual feed this is a excellent time to use it but it's not necessary. I'm going to start at the bottom of my piece of my pants leg and work my way up. And again, it is okay to take your time. 
to make sure that you are um, getting an accurate stitch here. And I have also increased my straight stitch for this um, for this task to a three millimeter from a 2.5. And sometimes, you know, you kind of got to stop, make sure that your piece is where you want it to be, readjust, and keep on going. So once we're done with our pin tuck, we're going to open it up, give it a press towards the outside edge. And then we're going to do the same for the other pant leg as well. All right, so now that we have finished our pin tuck on the front and also press that seam towards the outside leg, we're now gonna take our pocket facing, which is piece 11 and match it up to where the pocket goes on the front piece, matching all of our notches here. Then we're gonna take it to our sewing machine and sew between the dots. So between the small dot to the large dot. Once you are done doing that, you can go ahead and trim the seam, clipping here at the large dot. So now that I have gone ahead and sewn on my pocket facing, I've gone ahead and trimmed the seam and clipped at the large dot. Now what I'm going to do after pressing it is I'm going to top stitch this edge and do it on the other side as well. So now that we have done our top stitching, we're now going to attach our pocket piece. To do so, we can turn our garment over here and we're going to attach our pocket piece matching up all the raw edges around the pocket. There we go. So whereas on the front side, we can see that it also matches up at the dots. So what you are then going to do is you're going to sew around the edge of the pocket. You can use just your regular sewing machine or you can serge around the edge of the pocket. And once you have done that, go ahead and base down the sides and the top of the pocket combining both pieces. All right, so now that we've done our front pockets, it's now starting to start working on our front fly. This um, pattern, it's a little different because it does have a uh, fully functional front fly with a zipper. Um, not something that you often see in men's knit pants, patterns at least. So to get started, what we're gonna do on both sides, um, you are gonna make sure that you have marked all of your dots. And at your large dot here, you're going to sew about um, an inch up, an inch down, just to reinforce it. And then once you have done that, you're going to clip to the dot. All right, so now that you have reinforced that large dot point, what you're going to do is you're going to take the fly facing, which is number 14, and you're gonna make sure that you finish that raw curved edge. Um, I use my serger, but you can definitely zigzag it. You can use bias binding. You can turn it over and stitch it down, but you wanna make sure that you finish uh, that edge. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to match up our notches along that side. And this is gonna be on the side that's going to be facing left of your pants. And you're going to stitch down to that large dot. And I've marked it on both pieces and I'll make sure to mark it on the back as well before I sew it down. All right, so after sewing on the fly facing, I then and went and trimmed the seam down towards the large dot and then gave it a good press. 
All right. So now we're able to go ahead and start the installation of our zipper. So here I have a seven inch zipper. If you get a zipper that is too long for the project, what you can do is go ahead and make a mark at where you want to trim your zipper at or where you want your zipper to stop. And you can whip stitch it, you can zigzag it on your sewing machine over where you want your new stopper to be. So instead of using this stopper, you would use a thread stopper. Then you can uh, cut off the remaining part of the zipper before you're using it. There are more instructions on that in the actual pattern at step number nine, if you have any questions. Okay, now let's go ahead and start the installation of the zipper. What we are going to do is we're going to take our zipper and we're going to place the zipper stop, which I will be using around a, a quarter of an inch above the large dot and making sure that the zipper tape itself is along the seam between the facing and the front. And we're making sure that our zipper is closed as well. So once you have that in place, you can, can, secu you can secure that with a pin. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to our sewing machine and with our zipper foot, we're going to stitch along this left edge. So the side facing the left of your body. We're going to stitch along this left edge close to the zipper teeth, but not over them using our zipper foot. So one tip I would give while installing a zipper is that sometimes it's easier to start from the bottom. So you're still sewing the left side of the zipper if it was facing up, but instead of starting at the top of the zipper, I like starting at the bottom because there's less, um, you don't have the big zipper pull in the way and it allows you to get as close to the zipper as possible as you're sewing. Just going to change my stitch length as well as move my needle over so that I'm making sure that I'm getting as close to the zipper teeth as possible without going through them or messing up my machine by going over any type of metal where I could break the needle. All right, so then I like to stop there. As you can see, I have a pin here that was securing it. But now that it's sewn mostly in place, I can remove that. What I then do is I like to lift up my presser foot just to sew down the zipper so that the zipper pull is not in the way. And while keeping it straight, I like to go ahead and complete um, sewing up the zipper on this one side. All right, so now that that one side of the zipper is sewn on, what we're going to do is go ahead, is fold that back in place. You wanna make sure that you're giving this edge a press. Then you can go ahead and base down where you plan to top stitch. Um, so that similar shape that you see on all men's pants at the fly area. Um, you can also use the pattern piece itself, which does give that shape. If that doesn't work for you, a lot of times, some of your uh, zipper packets will also have that shape. So if you wanna make sure that you're getting that curve correctly, this is a uh, Colts zipper. And you can start working with this curve here to make sure that you're getting that shape correct. But it might be easy as just use a pattern piece. Also, you can use the um, fly facing itself and just go in around at least a quarter of an inch. So we're going to top stitch that down and then we'll start working on the other side. All right. So now that we have gotten the top stitching done on the left side of our front piece, we'll start working on the right side of the zipper. We're also going to need our right fly, which is piece number 13. And what you will do is you will go ahead and take that piece. I'll put it out here for you. And we're just going to fold it wrong sides together. So the outside, the right side of the fabric will be on either side. You can then go ahead and baste all this at three eighths of an inch. And if you want to, you can go ahead and finish this edge as well. We will need this for our next step. Now that I have my right fly prepped, 
what we are going to do is taking the right pant leg, we are going to fold under three eighths of an inch down to the notch where the large dot is. So we're gonna fold over three eighths of an inch and then press that. All right, so now that we've done that three eighths of an inch fold under um, on our right front, what we're gonna then do is we are going to butt that up next to the teeth of the zipper on the right side of the zipper. What you will notice is that the left front will overlap the right front on the zipper and the large uh, dots will match up. So what we will then do is we can pin baste this or you can do some regular basting in place just to make sure that that is secure for our next step. couple of pins here. And I've seen people also use um, like small pieces of fabric tape, um, like a double sticks tape or something like that, that also works as well. If you don't want to um, do like regular basting. All right. So now that those are in place, we will then take our um, right fly. And this is going to go, there we go. This is going to go right along the edge that you folded of the front, right along that edge so that when we go ahead and top stitch this down using our zipper foot, we're catching everything in one go. And we are just going to use our zipper foot and go all along there, along the teeth, catching both the front as well as the fly. Now that we got our front all done and settled for the moment, let's start working on our back. So on both back pieces, what you're going to do is you're going to, using the same method as the front, go ahead and put in your pin tucks. And again, I have marked them with my, with my small notches just to help me in the folding. I've also gone ahead and marked the placement for my welt pocket. And we are going to go ahead and reinforce the corners of that at the sewing machine, um, making sure that we're pivoting at the dots as we go on. Um, it all depends. You might wanna go ahead and do the full box if you feel more comfortable with that and feel like you will have more control. So I'll meet you at the sewing machine when it's time to do um, the boxing of the well pocket. So now that we have done our pin tuck, we're making sure that we have that pressed out towards the outer edge of the garment. And we're gonna start right at the top of um, the dot. So right here, I can see my, my marking there. And then once you get to the other dot, that's where you want to sink your needle down and pivot. And it is okay to take your time. And if you need to, lift your presser foot up just to make sure that you are where you want your dot to be. But when you get to the dot, sink, keep your needle sink down. Pivot again. And I always just lift my foot up just to see how close I am to the dot. If I can't see it, once I get there, I'm going to pivot again. And come back around. And if when you're getting to the pin tuck again, you might just want to lift your foot up, just make sure that it gets up underneath your presser foot and doesn't like drag the fabric or cause any bunching. 
keep on going. We're gonna start right where we started. Now we have our box for our well pocket. So now that we have reinforced where we're planning to put our uh, well pocket on the sewing machine, we're now going to take piece number 16, which is our welt. And we are going to fold it wrong sides together. And we're going to stitch um, along the line to the dots on either side and stitch along the open edge. Um, at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once we have done that, we're gonna press it and then trim down that seam allowance to 1 fourth. All right, so now that we have our welt stitch, what we're going to do, we're going to take our welt and place it along like this stitch, the stitching line of the welt to the stitching line of the box we created on the pant. And we're going to base that in place to hold it there. It is important that you um, do some type of holding <laughs> of this piece there, um, just so that we can keep everything in place when we stitch it down. So once we have done that, we will then take our actual pocket piece and we will place that on top of that stitching line. So we're making sure that we have the pants piece, the welt, and then on the stitching line, the actual pocket piece. So then we will pin that together and stitch between the dots of the welt piece itself. Now, one way that I like to do this is I find it easier if I sew from the back side. So here I used a contrasting color for um, my box that I did on my pair of pants. And so then I'm able to accurately see where I need to stitch to make sure that my lines are marking up. So that when we cut it, we're making sure that we are getting an accurate cut um, into these corners and I know where everything stops. So if it's easier for you, this is just a suggestion, turn it over and stitch from the backside, the welt as well as the pocket piece. So we have the backside of my garment and I can see where I have stitched the reinforcing of the welt. And you can also see this gray stitching um, that I used for my basting. And we're just gonna go along this orange line where it starts and where it stops. So I'm going to put my presser foot down first and sink my needle just to make sure that I am hitting where I need to hit. You can do this manually. So if you don't exactly hit it, you can um, bring the needle back up, reposition, go back down again. And then we're just going to do a straight stitch. And again, take your time if you need to. No need to rush. And our goal is to hit the mark that you originally hit. You don't want to go past it. It's okay if you're a little short. Um, but if you go past it, then you're going to have to cut past your reinforcement stitches to make sure that you're getting a square welt. Okay. And now my line of stitching is done and I can remove my base. Stand. All right, so now that my pocket piece, my welt are sewn on, I like to cut open my welt from the back. So what we're gonna do is making sure that we do not cut into the welt itself or the pocket actually, we're gonna just take a small clip in the center. Now, we have to open this up and when we open this up, the top piece is gonna to have to come um, up as well. I like to cut a little bit closer to the bottom 
line then the top just to give me a little bit more room to turn over but we're then going to just cut a straight line to about one fourth of an inch on either side where we will then cut into the corners we're not going to cut through that line of stitching but we're going to just make a small triangles at the edges so that we can sew those in place as well so we're going to cut that open and then we will turn it out So I've gone ahead and cut my line open and we can start to turn all of the pocket piece as well as the, the welt itself in towards the inside of the pants. There we go. And we're going to go over to our sewing machine and give this all a good press. All right, so now that we have the front part of our welt done and it's pressed, what we are now going to do is take our pocket bag right there. We're gonna fold it up to the top there. There we go. Make sure that the top of the pocket bag is meeting up to the top of your pants. And we're going to go to our sewing machine and sew down the top of our welt cut to the pocket bag itself. Once we have done that, the small triangles at the sides, we want to make sure that we're straightening, <laughs> straightening our pocket out. We will go ahead and secure those down as well on either side. So because especially on this top edge, I want to make sure that I am getting as close to the top of the welt without going through the welt as possible to help ensure that my pockets don't gape open. I'm going to use my zipper foot to help just help me get as close as possible without um, hitting the welt itself. Okay, so now that we've done that part, we're going to go and make sure that we're also getting these corners as well. All right, so now that you have secured your welt pocket as well as from the top and on the sides, what you can then do is you can go ahead and sew up the rest of your pocket or um, you can do this on your sewing machine or on a serger just to finish this edge on both sides. Then what we will do is we will base the top edge right along here in the seam allowance. So at around three eighths of an inch is fine. Now. One of the things around these pockets, uh, because this is a knit, sometimes we all can worry about a pocket that looks like it's in agony. So it looks like the pocket is gaping and it just looks like a big old hole when you're wearing your garment. One way that you can help to make sure to mitigate that if it does show up is you can go ahead 
and do a line of stitching here and here to secure it to make sure that all the pieces are staying together. Another way, um, if, it, if that doesn't even help, you can also go ahead and do a line of top stitching along here, literally maybe like a 16th of an inch, almost like you're stitching in the ditch, just to hold everything in place correctly to make sure your, that your pocket does not have any additional gaping. So those are just a few tips that you can use. But what I'm about to do is I'm going to go ahead and search the size of my pocket, base the top, and then we're ready to start putting these pants together. All right. So now that the fronts and the backs of our pants are done, what we're going to do is we are going to stitch both pants legs together. So stitch the front and the back together at the inner leg seam. Now here, um, you can use just your regular stitch. Um, you can decide to finish this first. So finish the edge, like with a serger or something like that. Um, you can finish the edge through pinking shears or you can serge it together. It depends on you, but you'll be using a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. So we're gonna do that to both legs and come right back. So now that I've stitched the inside leg seams, I press them towards um, the pant back the back of the pant leg and now we're going to work on stitching up the curve um, and like the crotch of the pants we're going to start at the large dot and stitch all the way up at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then especially around the curve here we're going to um, come in to the seam allowance itself around a quarter of an inch and stitch again just to secure it and then we're going to trim this seam back Especially here, it will be a little bit harder to try to get this under a serger, so it's probably best to do this under your sewing machine. And then you can just trim this back, maybe even using a pair of pinking shears if you're worried about fraying. As you can see, I've sewn up the back crotch seam. Um, I used a stretch straight stitch. You can use a zigzag. Um, because this fabric just does have a lot of pull, I knew that a regular like straight stitch or anything like that would um, had the chance of the stitches breaking as it stretched. Now that that's all done, I am going to go ahead and put the backs onto the fronts and sew the outside leg seam, making sure that I match up at the notches. I'm going to do this on my serger um, with a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. And once done, I will take it to my iron and iron the seam allowance and everything towards the back. All right, so now that the body of our pants are together, let's work on our waistband. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew the right and left front casings of our band to our back casing, uh, matching up at the notches. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew up to our dot, then we're gonna skip over to the other end of the dot and move on to the edge of the fabric. Cause we wanna make sure that this hole is there and this hole is here so that we can make sure that we have space for our elastic when we put it into the back. So we're gonna sew that up and then we'll be right back for the next step. So now that we have stitched this together, and I pressed my seam open. You can see the opening there. It is now, before we install this, it's now time that we go ahead and make our um, buttonholes so that we can fit our drawstrings. So you'll do this on your machine. Um, this fabric is interfaced. If you like some tearaway interfacing or anything like that to stabilize it does help a bit. Um, I've even used a piece of newspaper print as my stabilizer, something that I can then tear away when it's, it's done. Um, but and check with your machine to see what is the best buttonhole to use on a knit. Um, my machine has a specific buttonhole for knits. So if yours does, it might be best to do that. So we're going to do that on both the left and the right side. So once I completed the buttonholes, I went ahead and opened them up. You can use your seam ripper or like a buttonhole chisel to open those up. And this will be so that your drawstrings can come through. Now it's time to start to attach our waistband to our pant. All right, so now I have pinned on my waistband onto my pants, matching all of the notches as well as seams. And we're gonna sew it at 5 eighths of an inch. Remember, this is gonna have some stretch. So you want to make sure that you're using a stitch to accommodate that, such as a zigzag. 
um, or a triple stretch or anything like that. Because of some of the hardware in here and you don't want the added, added bulk, I would not use your serger for this bit, um, but just a regular um, sewing machine will work for this. All right, so after sewing on the waistband onto um, the pant, I went ahead and took the nine notch edge and folded up that seam allowance a little bit less than that just so that I can make sure that I'm able to stitch in the ditch easily. But next what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge and I folded it in half and we're going to stitch down on either side, closing off this edge so that we can then fold this to the back. And once we do that, our plan is to stitch in the ditch to attach our waistband. As we're doing this, we're making sure that we're keeping our little holes open so that we can attach our in so that we can install our drawstrings as well as our elastic in the next step. So now that your waistband is fully installed and you still have your holes open here, you are now going to start installing your drawstring. Your drawstring should be cut on the length of your waistband plus 10 inches. I'm using a 5 eighths inch twill tape. That's the wood I could find, but a regular like drawstring cord or anything like that is fine. You're gonna take a safety pin and pin to one edge. And using the hole, you're gonna start feeding that safety pin through. And luckily, it's not a long cord, so it shouldn't take you too long. And you're gonna come out right at the buttonhole at the front. You're gonna pull that all the way out until you have about half an inch left or so. And you're gonna place that into the hole where you can pin it and then baste it from the front in the ditch, uh, making sure you don't close that hole because we also need that hole to install the elastic. What I would suggest right now is just to go ahead and put a pin through it, um, just so that you don't risk closing this hole up. And you will do that to both sides. So after putting in the drawstrings, you're then going to take piece 21, which is your guide for your elastic, Use that to measure and cut your elastic I'm using one inch non-roll elastic. And you're gonna take a safety pin using the same hole and put it into the back casing channel. Um, once you have uh, put it in there, you wanna make sure that it's extending around five eighths on either side into the piece so that when we sew these down, we're making sure we're catching the elastic and the drawstrings as well. Once we have done that, we're going to hand stitch both sides of these clothes and go on to finishing the pants. So lastly, to finish off your pants, you're going to attach a hook and eye closure on um, the front to make sure that um, it's being held up and you, you will just hand stitch that on as well as hem the bottoms where you can take the lower edge, press it in a quarter and then roll it up at least around another five eighths or so, or depending on how much you need to hem the pants. If you don't even want to do that, you can also go ahead and search this edge and just fold over and then top stitch. It's all up to you. But with that, you are done with view B of ME 2009. And there you have it. Now you have completed ME 2009 view B, the Taylor Joggers. I hope you enjoyed the sewing experience with this pattern. Please, please, please share your makes. Would love to see them. Feel free to hashtag know me patterns as well as hashtag ME2009, or you can even hashtag Julian Creates. I would love to see what you make. And feel free to also reach out on social media at Julian Creates if you have any questions or any concerns as you're sewing through the pattern. I hope you enjoy and keep creating.